In this video, we're going to talk about vacuum filtration, which is an extremely valuable technique for separating heterogeneous mixtures of solids and liquids, such as you might get after a precipitation reaction or a crystallization process. So, as with any method you apply in the chemistry laboratory, the first thing you'll want to do is gather your glassware and materials necessary for it. And for vacuum filtration, there are at least three things that we absolutely need. The first is a flask that looks like an Erlenmeyer flask, but has a little sidebar at the top, this barbed tube up near the top of the flask. This is what's called a filter flask. And that barb, as we'll see in a second, is essential for obtaining the vacuum effect that's characteristic of vacuum filtration. The second is a specialized type of funnel called a Buchner funnel. What's unique about the Buchner funnel is, first of all, it's in two pieces. The bottom looks like a regular plastic funnel with a stopper that fits the filter flask so that we get a good seal there. And the top part is a cylindrical piece with holes in the top. So these holes are actually big enough to let solid pass through, but we're going to put filter paper on top of those holes to make a good seal there. The third necessary ingredient here is filter paper. And the filter paper is sized to match the cylindrical part of the Buchner funnel. To set up the apparatus, we simply plug in the Buchner funnel to the filter flask, making sure to get a good seal right here. We then connect the side arm of the filter flask to the vacuum, and make sure to connect up to the vacuum tap, not the gas tap. The vacuum tap is the one with the yellow piece on top, and it says vac, which makes it pretty clear that this is the vacuum tap. You'll also notice that this tubing is a little bit thicker than the gas tubing in many cases. And we want to use thick tubing with the vacuum tap because we want the tubing to hold its shape when the vacuum starts pulling air out of here, and only the thicker tubing is able to do that. You won't get good vacuum if you use thin-walled tubing that crimps up like this when you turn the vacuum on. That's pretty much all there is to setting up the apparatus. We'll throw in a piece of filter paper on the top as well. And now we can go ahead and turn the vacuum on, and this is going to pull that filter paper right down on top of the holes in the Buchner funnel. So the vacuum is now running, and I have a heterogeneous mixture here of alum crystals and water, such as we might see after a recrystallization of alum, for example. I've got two other tools here that are going to be useful for us. The first is a wash bottle of distilled water. It can help to wet the filter paper before you apply the mixture, um, to ensure a good seal of the filter paper with the Buchner funnel, make sure that as little solid as possible actually gets through the filter. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And of course, that water will be pulled through pretty quickly. So more or less right after I've wet the filter paper, I'm going to go ahead and start pouring the mixture on top. So initially, and this is fairly common depending on the nature of the solid, it's pretty much all liquid. And so I'm using a scoopula to scoop out the remaining crystals. In many cases, you'll want to wash these crystals with additional solvent. So it might be water, it might be another solvent. Um, when you go to wash the crystals, it's a good idea to pour the washings into your beaker first and then transfer those washings into the filter. This will help wash out that last little bit of solid in the bottom of the beaker, and especially when you have much finer um, solid in there, something like a powder rather than crystals, that's going to be essential to getting high yield. So pour your washings into the beaker first and then go over top. And once you've got everything in the filter, you can simply rinse like so from a wash bottle to wash off those crystals. Now at this point, it's a good idea to actually let air come through this for a while. Reason being that we want to pull all of that water off of these crystals and so the vacuum over time will pull water through. So you'll see it's a fairly slow rate of dripping in there, but we will get some additional dripping over time, and this will help all of the water evaporate off the top of those crystals so that our yield is reported accurately. That's pretty much all there is to vacuum filtration. When you're done, turn off the vacuum and break the vacuum. The easiest place to break the vacuum is probably where the side arm meets the tubing right here. You'll hear kind of a, a rushing sound when you remove the tubing like so. And from here, you can remove the top half of the Buchner funnel and work with this part independently. So if you're being super clever, you could, for example, weigh this part of the Buchner funnel and the filter paper before filtering the solid and then weigh this entire thing again to get the mass of solid only. If you need the filtrate, you can discard the solid, 
remove the stopper and pour off the filtrate. If you need both, then you can put the solid in one beaker and put the filtrate from the filter flask in another beaker. There's a lot of flexibility to this method as far as getting out of it what you want or need. One last thing I want to mention here is that in the demo we did here, the alum crystals are pretty large and, and pretty bulky and, and boxy, so they tended not to impede the flow of water through the Buchner funnel. If you're working with a much finer powder or a powder that's present in much larger amount, what you may find is that the filter gets plugged up and the water refuses to flow. That's where a scupula or a rubber policeman can come in handy. If you gently kind of scrape along the top of the filter paper, taking care not to rip the filter paper, which is going to pull solid through, then you can open up some space for liquid to flow through uh, without allowing a great deal of solid to come through. So keep in mind that the rubber policeman and the scupula can be your friends in vacuum filtration as well.